Kamat, get us to understand how a traditional company like yours is really adopting AI in our day-to-day -day lives and what's really changed for you over the past couple of years. So, uh, firstly, thanks for having me here. And uh, just to set some context on you know, the scale at which we operate, right? So, from a size Larson and Tobro, at any point in time, we are like having 800 plus projects, you know, including bridges to airports to heavy engineering, um, you know, precision engineering systems, defense, nuclear projects, and uh, close to around 40,000 plus assets uh, that include, you know, pumping stations to fuel bowsers, you know, gantry cranes, you name it, right? And uh, over the last, I would say, uh, a decade or so, we have been through this journey of digital transformation, which basically meant, you know, we can connect, we can have a connected ecosystem across these project sites, across this equipment, all of that, you know, IoT, sensors, cameras, and all of that. OT data, IT data, all streaming in uh, from ERP systems, IT data from the ERP systems, and all of that, okay? Which basically meant that we could have uh, micro and macro level views of project performance, you know, asset utilization, aspects like safety, you know, all of that, right? So, uh, we've been through that journey. And over the last, I would say, couple of years now, we've been in kind of a mission mode, so to speak, uh, in terms of how we can apply AI to take our operations to a whole new level. Right? And in that context, we've been looking at some of our core uh, business workflows, uh, you know, entire life cycle, all the way from beginning from contract uh, to procurement to, you know, how do we execute on projects, planning, you know, all of that. Just to take an example, uh, you know, we handled close to around maybe 3,000 to 4,000 tenders that we respond to on an annual basis. And uh, the whole process of responding to a tender goes through this whole rigor of, you know, looking at risks. Uh, there are multidisciplinary teams that get involved in looking at risks, doing the bid assure, go, no go kind of a decision. And that whole process takes close to around one to two months. Now, with all the advancements in generative AI, looking at all the project history that we have, from the tenders that we have responded to in the past, can we break this down to a matter of days or maybe a couple of weeks versus having to take so much time in responding to a tender? So that brings in agility in, in terms of how we respond and, you know, how we, um, you know, um, conduct business in some sense. We're also looking at uh, this whole concept of physical AI or embodied AI. I think that's a, a big motion around that. Um, because apart from back office processes, I think the, the potential or the promise of, uh, you know, physical AI at project sites where we can automate tasks at uh, project sites, I think, holds immense, immense uh, potential, you know, just to give some examples. And, and in the manufacturing space, this has been happening for quite some time. But in the construction domain, I think it's, it's, a, it's a, something that's beginning to evolve very significantly. I mean, just to share an example, um, if you were to do, let's say, robotic painting at a, at a building or at a site, uh, we're looking at potentially one is to five kind of productivity ratios. Um, and think of a robot doing this. It's not working in a single shift. It's doing probably three shifts potentially versus, you know, workers that would be probably working at one shift. So the order of magnitude impact is very significant.